Today, we're going to explore self-efficacy, which is the belief that we can succeed in a given situation. How do you feel when you face a challenging situation? Do you feel confident and believe you have whatever it takes to succeed? Or do you doubt your skills or ability to tackle the task ahead of you? The answer you give reflects your self-efficacy about the situation. But what exactly is self-efficacy? Have you ever wondered why some people welcome a specific challenge with enthusiasm? whereas others shy away from precisely the same challenge? That's because some individuals have high self-efficacy with regard to that challenge, and others don't. Self-efficacy is a psychological concept that refers to your thoughts and perceptions about your ability to perform the actions needed to reach a specific goal. In simpler terms, Self-efficacy is your belief that you can succeed in a given situation. One thing to keep in mind is self-efficacy is not about having the skill to complete a task. It's about whether you believe you can achieve that task. Suppose you feel confident that you can handle a new challenge. In that case, you might be highly motivated to take action, put more effort toward accomplishing it, and display higher resilience when you face adversity. These positive beliefs you have in your abilities actually make you more likely to succeed. Research shows that we are more likely to participate in activities and delve into tasks for which we possess high self-efficacy and less likely to take action for those which we possess low self-efficacy. For example, you and your friend may have similar body types and athletic skills, but if you have a higher self-efficacy for running a marathon than your friend, you might be more motivated to train for it and less likely to give up before crossing the finish line. Keep in mind, though, that self-efficacy is a situation-specific construct. In other words, you may have high self-efficacy towards certain situations but low self-efficacy towards others. For example, imagine someone gives you car keys and asks you to drop her off at the hospital. Now imagine the same person gives you helicopter keys and asks you to fly her to the hospital. Unless you're a pilot, you're likely to have a higher self-efficacy for driving to the hospital than flying there. Now that we know what self-efficacy is, let's talk about how self-efficacy develops in the first place. In the 1970s, Albert Bandura outlined the four major sources of influence on self-efficacy. These are, one, mastery experiences, two, vicarious experiences, three, verbal persuasion, and four, emotional or physiological states. Let's take a closer look at each of these sources of influence. The first one is mastery experiences. When it comes to developing self-efficacy, Bandura determined that mastery experiences, which are an individual's past performance outcomes, are the most reliable predictor of self-efficacy. In other words, if you have performed well at a given task in the past, you might feel competent about performing a similar task again. Keep in mind though, that mastery experiences can be double-edged swords. Your positive experiences can boost your self-efficacy, but your negative experiences can erode it. Second is vicarious experiences. Vicarious experiences, or observations of other people's performances, take the second spot for influencing self-efficacy. Observing another person deal with a situation and watching them succeed can increase your self-efficacy in that situation. However, like with the mastery experiences, watching someone else fail or experience losses might lower your self-efficacy. 
The third source of influence that shapes self-efficacy is verbal persuasion. In this case, what other people say about your performance or ability to perform shapes how you feel about your capabilities to handle that challenge. Moreover, the more credible the source of verbal persuasion, the greater their influence over your self-efficacy. For example, imagine a parent or coach rooting you on, telling you that you can do it. This actually helps your chances of success. Again, the reverse case is also true. Discouraging words and put-downs can chip away bits of self-efficacy. The last source of influence in Bandera's self-efficacy model involves internal sensations. Your mood and outlook may affect how you approach a challenge. Simply put, having a positive attitude might enhance your self-efficacy, but a negative attitude might diminish it. Physiological influences also have an impact. These influences include your bodily reactions, such as fatigue, aches, pain, pleasure, and levels of stress hormones. According to Bandera, people who perceive their physical reactions as energizing have higher self-efficacy, whereas people who regard them as setbacks have lower self-efficacy. Since Bandera's research, self-efficacy has become one of the most closely studied constructs in psychology. Almost every type of human behavior has been explored through the lens of self-efficacy. First, the influence of self-efficacy has been studied extensively for teaching and learning behaviors. For example, when researchers compared students in good academic standing to those on academic probation, they found that successful students had higher self-efficacy. Researchers also found that teachers suffer less from job-related stress and burnout when they have high self-efficacy. Second, a meta-analysis, which is a study of studies, revealed a strong correlation between self-efficacy and employees' job satisfaction. Self-efficacy also impacts entrepreneurship and helps would-be entrepreneurs to consider new opportunities and cross the barriers needed to establish their businesses. Third, in a study of weight management, participants who completed self-efficacy promoting activities not only had higher motivations to lose weight and implement healthier habits than control subjects, but they also shed more pounds. As you can see, self-efficacy plays a role in our success across numerous areas of life. Here are a few more examples of self-efficacy in modern life. Example 1. A prospective employee reads the description of a new position for a role she hasn't performed before. She decides that she does have the skills and the aptitude to thrive in that position, and she sends in her application. Example 2. A man finds out that his partner is pregnant. He believes he will be a good parent and looks forward to raising a child with his partner. Example 3. After moving to a different neighborhood with his family, a child feels confident that he can make friends in his new school. These examples illustrate high self-efficacy. But how does low self-efficacy affect our choices and behaviors? Low self-efficacy is similar to low self-esteem. However, self-esteem is an individual's opinion about their overall worth, whereas self-efficacy is the belief in one's ability to succeed in a specific situation. Although a person with high self-esteem might also have high self-efficacy in many cases, these two experiences don't always go hand in hand. This is because self-efficacy is a situation-specific construct. Therefore, you might have an overall high opinion of yourself, but believe that you lack the skills to handle a particular task. Or you might have low self-esteem, but feel confident about tackling a problem with ease. 
So how do we improve our self-efficacy? First, practice, practice, practice. This tip is related to the mastery experiences in Bandura's self-efficacy model. Simply put, the more you practice doing something, the more likely you will get better at it, and the more confident you will feel doing the same task in a different situation. Second, try new things. People tend to feel more comfortable with familiar situations. Therefore, the more novelty you accept into your life, the less intimidated you may be by new tasks. Trying new things can also increase the range of skills at your disposal. Third, find role models. Witnessing someone else achieve the goal you want to achieve might help you imagine yourself as successful. You may then begin to believe, if they can do it, so can I. Fourth, build a support system. Hearing positive feedback about your performance can significantly boost your self-efficacy, especially if the praise comes from experts, teachers, coaches, and peers who have done well in similar endeavors. So try to surround yourself with supportive people whose opinions you value. Fifth, be optimistic. It is essential to recognize self-doubt so that you can address it. You might try to focus on your past victories and positive experiences to remind yourself of all that you are capable of. Keeping a list of accomplishments that you are proud of can come in handy when you need a quick boost to your mood. These were just a few ways to boost your self-efficacy. Here's a final note. Building your self-efficacy can give you the motivation and perseverance to reach the finish line. As you continue to build this skill, life will seem to open up before you, offering you limitless possibilities. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and check out our free resources at berkeleywellbeing.com.